Hi there, this is Dr. Donna of Happy and also of Homeschoolers of the Philippines as well as the Kid Starter Curious Curriculum. So it's already July and it's possible that you have decided already on what kind of home-based learning will happen in your home. You know, siguro naisip nyo na na, yes, kaya ko mag-homeschool or hindi eh. So nag-enroll na lang muna ako dun sa school pero puro online learning and I need to support my children. Pwede namang dumating na yung mga libro at actually pwede na kayo mag-umpisa, nakapag-decide na kayo kung anong provider, kung mag independent if uh, what materials you'll be using, or maybe hindi pa dumalating yung mga libro, but you can actually already start some form of homeschool sessions as a trial. So, marami pong mga katanungan. There are many, many questions right now that pertain to how do you create your schedule. Some providers and some curriculum, they offer actual schedules. You know, they actually give you a week-to-week, day-to-day, and subject-to-subject, you know, schedule. But most actually will leave it up to you on how you will plan your schedule. And uh, sometimes this is a cause of anxiety or fear for first-time parents or first-time homeschooling teachers. So I created a blog post uh, called Schedule in uh, my homeschool blog called homeschool.ph and it had a lot of tips around it. But I decided to create this video to give you more information on how you can arrive at a good working schedule for your family and for your home learning sessions. Again, one of the biggest uh, tip is there is no such thing as a perfect schedule and when you create a schedule, it's like uh, sometimes they say it's like the British weather. <laughs> it's one thing on one day and it's after a few hours, it's another thing. You know, the homeschool schedule is something that evolves. It's something that you need to adjust. You need to learn from trial and error. Hindi po to nagagawa sa isahang uh, pagsubok at okay na po araw-araw ganun na po yun. You are learning a lot of new things the, sa isang schedule po marami pong uh, nakabase dito there are a lot of people or members of a certain schedule when you create it. Of course, there's you the parent, teacher there are your students your children there are other members of the family Maybe the availability of the other online classes that you probably have or you've enrolled with. Then, meron po ho yung mga araw-araw na nangyayari na pwedeng planuhin at yung mga hindi natin na paplanong nangyayari, you know, like uh, nagbubulaga sa atin. So, sa, unlike a school, in a regular school, you bring your children there and the sketch schedule is there and you pick them up. May adjustments lang po kung may mga after-school activities. But generally, you do not think of what's happening and the adjustments made in the uh, school. So right now, with school in your house, whether it be nago homeschool kayo, nago home-based learning, na somebody, uh, there is a third party that provides the classes, you are now sort of like a manager or you are actually the teacher. So... Ano po yung mga simpleng prinsipyo o simpleng mga tips na aking masasabi uh, sa paggawa o sa pag-create uh, uh, ng inyong day-to-day schedule. Marami pong mga paraan, you know. And some would use a simple journal or a planner. Some may use a giant calendar. Meron namang po talagang mga napakagandang mga homeschool planner na nabibili usually abroad wherein na ando na ang mga ipa-plot in na lang yung mga inyong gustong gawin. Or some would even go as far as Google Sheets or Excel files where you, they can actually have more uh, you know ways to plot in for a longer span of time. There are also homeschool providers that even, you know, give, supply these uh, Excel sheets for you to manage and use. And there are, I think, software or apps that also give 
schedules um, that can be used for the homeschool sessions. But on a whole, these are my tips. Now, first and foremost, I believe in the power of prayer. So when you plan your schedule, when you look forward two weeks or four weeks or a quarter, it's always good to bathe it in prayer. And when you actually start the session of homeschooling, pray on your own as the parent teacher and pray with your children when god leads us to homeschool i do believe he will provide and he will enable and he will also help us order our days and bring in more peace and calm so always include prayer in your day-to-day -day schedule next is picture picture the small picture and the big picture you know in homeschooling we can be so detailed in taking care of you know lessons on a per page level but we are also the one looking at the bigger picture of is learning is happening at home you know we do not have all the different people in a school that's involved in that whether it be the principal the guidance counselor the uh, subject coordinator the homeroom and the teacher you know from the real sessions with the children of bringing across facilitating learning to actually looking at the bigger picture of how this you know 10 minute engagement with your child affects the whole plan to educate your children at home you know, there is a way to always uh, challenge yourself to always, you know, look at it in both sides. There are days you will look at it in a big picture. There are days when you have to go into the details. So the big picture would mean your goals, your mission. Why are you doing this? What are the areas that you think you need to focus on? What are the character traits? Ang tubay mga kailangan um, uh, ito sa mga bata. Ano yung mga subject areas na medyo kailangan nila ng tulong? Do they need help in reading comprehension, in mastery of reading, in creative writing? Do they need help in a certain concept in math or science or in some skill? You know, ano ba yung big picture goals ninyo in terms of character, in terms of mental, physical, emotional development? Yun ang big picture. Ang small picture is ano yung gagawin nyo for that day that helps you achieve the big picture. The small picture would be assigning 20 minutes or 30 minutes on, on a certain topic or choosing a book that may help you address certain concerns or certain character traits. Or if you will choose an online class that will support some gaps either in math or in reading that your children need. So the big picture, small picture uh, approach really helps, but it takes a while. It will take some practice to find a groove that works for you. So the tip is don't get so engrossed in the big picture. You're not able to translate it on how it works on a daily basis, but don't naman get so into the small details that you lose your strength, you lose your energy, you lose all the time in it without really connecting it to the overall goal of homeschooling. Of course, plan ahead. You know, and sabi nga ni Benjamin Franklin, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. In other words, just simple planning can really make a big difference. So at the beginning, you might find yourselves taking more time with the planning, but as you find your groove and as you hone your skills in planning and in conducting your sessions, the planning time will be less and less. So again, you bring in the big picture and the small picture and the planning. No? You can plan ahead for the entire year, what are the goals, or you can plan in a quarterly basis or semestral basis, or you can plan on a monthly basis, or you can plan on the weekly basis. I more or less plan on a two week basis so that I can also bring in the work options and family matters in, in a spread of 14 days or maybe 10 days if you don't do school on the weekends. So planning is really, really important. And when you plan normally, you already have your curriculum with you. You already have the books, you already have the modules. And if you are dealing with multi-level kids or multi-subjects, 
there is also uh, you can actually save a lot of time and save a lot of energy and increase the benefits of learning if you merge and integrate subjects so that would need some planning and I usually look uh, I usually begin by looking at the table of contents by looking at the syllabus of the material that would be taken for a quarter or for a year then I look for parallel subjects I look for similarities I look for connections and when I do that I do that across subjects and across levels so Titignan ko yung kung ano ang, ang syllabus ni kuya at ni ate at nung bunso, you know? At titignan ko kung ano dun ang pwede kong pagsabayin, ang pwedeng pagsamahin, ano yung mga projects na sa tingin ko na magugustuhan nilang lahat, you know, uh, na gawin o nakasama sila sa project na yon pero iba't iba yung uh, level ng um, output na aking i-require o when you do this, the learning session can tackle several children and can tackle also merge disciplines or merge subjects. So that really actually sort of multiplies the time and also multiplies the, the depth at which the lesson can be learned. So this is what they call integrated approach, problem-based approach, unit study approach. Um, Apply in a multi-level setup. So get, so so read up on those things so you will learn how to do it. Don't be afraid to pass it up. If there's something that is not relevant at this time, or if there's something that has been taught already before, and you feel and you know that the children do not need this anymore, just pass it up. Just say no. If there's an online class that is being offered and everyone among your friends or joining because they want it. If you look at your goals, if you look at your overall big picture and you say, ah, we don't need that, pass it up. You don't need to say yes. So don't be afraid to remove some of the things in the material that was given to you when you already know the children already know it. If it is redundant, if it's not necessary, or if it will be learned in a future time, or if you can find a way to present it in another opportunity, you can pass it up. You know, you can also pivot and adjust. As parents, we're the ones that observe our children the most. We actually know what's happening to them on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we see a learning material or a content, we can very well decide, can I tweak this? Pwede ko bang ibahin ang angulo? Pwede ko bang gawing mas exciting? Pwede ko bang i-relate sa isa niyang nalaman or natuto the other day? You're the best You're the best judge to actually think, can I tweak this? Can I adjust it so that learning will be more max? As to how you pivot, how you adjust, how you tweak a lesson, you can be sensitive to your children, you can research on ideas, but you're the one who actually observes if something can be adjusted, if something can be more personalized and customized. So don't be afraid to pivot and adjust. So I've shared with you tips on praying, looking at the big and the small picture. Don't be afraid to pass things up. Be ready to pivot and to adjust. And always do all of this through practice and perseverance, you know. Just keep practicing if you make a mistake, if you fail, if you rush them on something one day, take time the next day. If the schedule wasn't so good, then you make some adjustments. If it took so long for your children to get something or get a lesson and you spent more time and therefore naubo sa oras sa isang subject, then catch up on another day or another session. Practice and just persevere. You will find the groove that works for you. You will find a system that works for you. I used to do very detailed schedules where it is broken in 15 minutes to 30 minutes. After doing that and realizing that I can never fulfill the that kind of scheduling that I did, I just decided that for as long as I do certain disciplines or subjects or projects on a regular basis in a week's time, I was good. I did not go into the specific of minutes or I did not go into the specific of allotting certain number of minutes per subject. Your goal here is to progress. Perfection is never a goal. 
So always remember that for as long as you go from one step to the next step to the next step in small steps or in increments that is going moving forward, this is progressing, you're already on a very good and positive way. Do not aim for perfection in terms of work, in terms of schedule, in terms of output. That is one way to fail, you know. Aim for just bringing your children to a level of progress, to a level of gaining confidence, to bring your children to a sort of rhythm of progressing every day. You know, there are days it's gonna be bad. There are days that it's gonna be like, oh my gosh, will homeschool work for us? But you just pick up the next day and start afresh, ask for forgiveness, say sorry, and say we're gonna commit to do things better today. So aim for progress, not for perfection. And lastly, before I go, don't forget to pamper yourself as a teacher. This is an entire um, tip on self-care. So think what works for you, what helps you feel rested and energized. So if that is exercise time, if that is being able to watch your Korean novella or Netflix, if that is doing a hobby, find a way to put them within your week in pockets that refreshes your soul, refreshes your body, refreshes your mind so that you are renewed as a teacher. So again, just remember these simple tips as you prepare your homeschooling days as you map out your schedule. So to review, here are my eight tips for you as you schedule, as you draft the day-to-day -day schedule for your home school lessons or for your home-based learning sessions. One is don't forget to pray. Include prayer in your daily activities and also include it when you plan. Prayer is key. Number two, always have a perspective of the big picture and the small picture. You know, balance it out wherein you see the different angles. Kita nyo yung iba't ibang angulo ng pago homeschool. Number three is plan ahead. Kailangan talaga magplano. So take time, spend some time to plan your homeschool sessions, your homeschool days. Don't forget that it's okay to pass it up. If it's not needed, take it out. And then number five, also be ready or be uh, willing to pivot and adjust. Be flexible. Number six, practice and persevere in getting your schedule in a good rhythm and in a good cadence. Number seven, aim for progress, not perfection. Be gentle with yourself. And number eight, don't forget to also give pockets of pampering. Self-care is very important. So I hope this helps you when you fix your schedule. Bye!